Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. You join me out of the farm once again because in today's video we're going to take a look at a few cars that my beloved other half Sophie has bought from auction. Uh, she asked me could I buy a few more cars to kind of stock up so that she's got a few little cheap cars, Sophie's bangers as we call them, and uh, of course I said yeah that's fine just don't get carried away try and buy some some decent stuff if you can, stuff that's got MOT, stuff that's got service history etc. So um, yeah, she went crazy, bought a load on a Monday. We collected them. There was a bit of a hoo-ha. BCA gave us the wrong car. We brought that all the way back here from, uh, from Bristol, basically back down to Bridgewater where there are other branches. And then we had to drive back to go and swap it over. And in the meantime, she'd bought another one, I think. And Josh forgot to pick that up. Um, so not only are these cars awful, as you're about to find out, there's also been a bit of a nightmare getting them here, and it's probably going to be a bit of a nightmare getting them out of here. So, lesson learned, don't let the other half run rampant with your BCA buyer account. And uh, I had to stop her on the second day from buying even more because I was like, we don't even know what the problems with these cars are yet, and I bet they're problematic. And they are, so let's check them out. So, here we are. She has bought a 2004 Volkswagen Polo, can't be too bad, right? A 2008 Citroen Picasso and a 2009 Seat Ibiza 1.2. All pretty, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff, standard traffic, uh, nothing too exotic, so that's fine. What they are isn't too much of an issue. Uh, it's the ones she's picked that I have a bit of a grievance with. Um, best is probably the Polo second best slash worst is the Picasso and at the end we have the Ibiza which you may well have seen in the thumbnail why that's the bad one but I think what we'll do is we'll work from the Polo through the Picasso and to the Seat Ibiza and find out why I'm not exactly over the moon over the moon over the moon with these purchases okay so our 2004 Polo is a 1.4 SE uh, what I was going to tell you, it's on 86,179 miles, it was a grade 4, and she bought it for £900 plus fees, which made it a total of £1,120.30, plus us going and collecting it. So, let's walk around and see what we've got. So, headlights could do a restoration, but not too bad at this price point. There's a weird kind of scuff thing on the bonnet here, I don't think... It's just about catching my nail, but you might be able to polish that out if you really wanted to. Some paint missing off of here. Alloy wheels could do with a clean, and they are slightly curved, but you know, this is thousand pound territory. What are you expecting? Um, it's reasonably straight on this side. There is a little ding there. You might just be able to make out. Good tires on this side. Coming around the back. This was previously sold at Specialist Cars Bristol Limited. Shout out to you guys. Um, another little scuff there, little scuffs on the corner. Bit of a scratch down the side. And then the worst of it is this scratch on the bottom of the passenger doors and the sill. But again, at this price point, what she's likely to get for this? A couple of thousand, maybe. Um, not the end of the world, is it? This tyre... Also looks pretty good, but maybe starting to look a little perished. Our wing mirror cover is smashed off. I don't think the electric adjustment works, but we'll try that in a minute. And then we've got another budget tire on the front. And again, a few scuffs on this corner. But on the whole, for an £1,100 car, that's not too bad at all, is it? So we'll hop inside. We have got two keys. One works with the remote central locking which is this one, and there's another one somewhere, which I don't think does work. Nice that we got leather interior. It's a five-speed manual. It's not bad in here. Could do with a little clean, but it's not horrendous for an auction car. We've got a little bit of a trim missing there, I think. Um, smells okay. It just smells a bit old, which it is, because it's nearly, what, 20 years old? But... Condition wise, not too bad at all. Oh, oh god. Keep setting the alarm off. It's got very sensitive buttons on the key fob. So 86,200 miles on the clock now. Let's fire it up. 
Radio works. Blowers work. Air conditioning, I think, is okay. Cup holder. I really actually quite like this cup designer cup holders and these polos. They come out like that. You put your drink in and then you can ratchet it up to whatever size drink you've got. So it fits all different sizes because most don't, do they? Um, what have we got in the glove box? We got uh, the V5, so I'll try and keep that off screen. The original books that have got wet. Is there a service book in here? Because I don't think there's one anywhere else. Um, it's hard to tell because it's so wet and bent. I'm going to assume not. I don't think there was any history with this. But... Little three thunder sounds all right. We'll let's turn it off and then... Ah. Let's have a quick look under the bonnet. Here we are, let's check the coolant first. Okay, that looks all good actually. It's nicely filled, not overfilled, not underfilled. Let's check. Oil cap looks okay. Dipstick looks good too. Dipstick back in now. Belt condition looks okay. So we've got our ECU zip tied in. It's always reassuring to see. But fires up on the button. Um, no real major concerns there. Seeing as we've got three cars to look at today, I'm probably not going to take them out and drive them. I have, in fact, the only one I have driven is this Polo. Uh, I'd like to drive the Picasso and find out what might be up there. I've moved it from over here somewhere where it's parked up to this spot. And since then, I'm not quite sure what I've done with the keys. I think I might have taken them home. So I might or might not be able to fire this one up. I don't know. But the Ibiza, we definitely can't drive. So I'm not going to do test drives on all of them. But what I will tell you is that with this Polo, the clutch is basically out the door. It is right at the top of the bike before it goes anywhere. So you're kind of like revving, waiting for it to pull away and nothing happens. Uh, so that's quite a nuisance and it won't be long before that niche changing. I mean, it's not slipping. I've tested it, tried it, given it lots of, um, you know, put it under a lot of load to see if it will slip. It doesn't. So um, it's not at that point just yet, but it can't be far off. And anyone who comes to look at it is not going to be too happy about that. Other than that, I think the tracking must be way off because the steering is a little bit loosey-goosey and when you let off the acceleration it pulls to the left a little bit and then when you accelerate it gradually pulls back to the right but not hard but it's just when you let off the accelerator it pulls to the left so it could even be subframe it could be steering rack loose something like that either way it's uh, no bueno at the moment so that's probably gonna need a clutch um, it needs a service because I don't think it's got any service history it needs a wing mirror cap if she's going to bother that. I don't know if she will, but I suppose of the lot, that is the best one, even though it's going to cost quite a few hundred quid to get it right before you can want to sell it to someone else. So that's the best one. So let's look at the one in position number two. Right, here is our Citroen Picasso, marked on the windscreen as no reserve, no surprise. Um, oh. I mean, where do I start with this? I said to her, it'll probably be rusted out. She said, no, it's not. I mean, it's had the seals done before. I actually haven't got down and really checked this out, but you can see where it's had patches put in the seals before, and then they've stone chipped all the way along because that isn't an original feature on these. You see it very often on uh, Citroen Zara Picassos, but that's normally because the seals have been done. It's just a way to hide it or make it look tidier. Um, an absolute ton of brake dust on this tire which is looking a bit worn on the outer edges isn't it it's got a good amount of tread i mean a legal amount of tread but it's not great but um not only does it obviously need a good clean but why is there so much brake dust um yeah 
I, uh, I don't know what's going on there. We've got scratches down the side. We've got these sort of sunscreen marks where hands have been on them with sunscreen or some kinds of oil or something. It's done something weird to the lacquer on the paint, so that needs sorting out. It's got some weird stuff going on with the paint here, which probably needs some serious polishing and whatever. But you wouldn't bother because this is the back of the car, which A is just filthy. We've got duct tape holding on this part here. It's just tatty crap. We have got parking sensors. They're covered in moss and someone's literally gone across this with some kind of gray spray paint, haven't they? Just to try and tidy up where they've been chucking stuff in the boot. I imagine this was a tip run car. It was a National Trust member's car back in 2014, but I can guarantee that the previous owners of this car, the most recent owners of this car, were not paid up members of the National Trust. And around this side, it only gets worse, unfortunately. We got this huge ding in the rear quarter that kind of scrapes through. Obviously happened at the same time as that great big gouge happened. General scratches. There's a ripple in the thing here. Um, again, massive great big welding patch all the way along this side. Again, both sides, it may just clean up and you might be able to stone chip it again. Um, but it's just so commonplace on these. It's, and frankly, I don't know if this car's worth it, but um, unfortunately I've got it now, thanks to the other half. So we've got to do something with it. It's just not stuff I want to be dealing with really. So we have had to have a little talk about experience of buying things. And just because the damage report looked okay or the assured report, it wasn't even an assured report, it was a BCA essential check looked okay. Uh, that does not mean the car is perfect. It just means the tires are okay, etc., etc. This Picasso was a grade five, as you'd expect. Look how many things there are. You'd have to paint to get this straight again. Um, just, just don't want it. This is probably the best wheel of the lot as far as damage goes. There's only a few scuffs on it. Again, tires really worn on that edge, so it needs a tire on there. This other front alloy wheel. Again, even more caked in the uh, brake dust, but it is a good tire. So I think, I think from memory now, counting, it needs two tires. It needs a seriously good clean. Uh, it's just biffed all the way around. We've got a few more National Trust stickers, 2017, 2016. Uh, yeah, not, uh, not 2023 or 2022, funnily enough. But let's have a look inside because uh, believe it or not, it gets even worse in there. I'm not actually sure I can open this boot without... Oh God, I don't think it's been opened in a while. And the button, if we can see it, is just... There's no rubber on there or anything. And now it's making a weird noise. Uh, so we've got our spare wheel here. As you can see, it's just absolutely filthy. Dog hair everywhere. And I can tell you it absolutely stinks of like wet mangy dog in here. Headrest missing. This spare wheel. Let's have a look. It's looking pretty old. That's not going to be much use to you. What's going on under here? Oh God. Well, we've got a penny back, so we are finally seeing some return on our investment, but just look how grimy it is. It's revolting. Back of the seat, missing. In the back, uh, back of this seat is like hanging off as well. Let's try and get this seat up and out the way. It's just mangy in here. We've got something off of something oh god look at it in there it's all damp and gross and uh yeah this seat back cover is hanging off does the tray still work how does it even open out does it lift up and then fold down well the tray still works so i don't know what i'm complaining about we have still got working trays um it's practically a limousine I remember this door having a typically Citroen check strap. 
Oh, it's just hideous. Um, yeah, properly grubby in here. Just rank. Imagine the time that's going to be put into this. I reckon this is like a day and a half of valeting to get this looking, you know, semi-decent. Like it hasn't had some absolute hippocrocker pigs living in it. Um, just not worth it, is it? That's why you don't want to buy cars this cheap that are graded this badly in this bad a condition sight unseen because if it turns out this has got real bad engine problems or whatever else then you've just thrown your money away haven't you because there's no value left in this car the only value that this car has is that it is a car that drives and it has MOT and speaking of value it's a 2008 Citroen Zara Picasso it's the 1.6 HDI which at least is one of the better engines to have it's on 149,000 miles so highly desirable it's a grade 5 uh, it had one issue on the assured report which was one of the tires I think it's got a bit more of an issue than just the one and she paid 300 pounds at the block which was a total of 473 pounds and 30 pence would you pay 475 quid for that because I definitely wouldn't have but there we are. She knows better. And this is what we've got. Good news though, I did find the keys. So we can fire this up and let you hear it. Bad news is the central locking fob looks like that. So it is definitely not doing anything. It should probably lock it, but it's not going to. Um, and I think these are all the keys we've got. I can't begin to describe how bad it smells in here. Oh, it really is grim. So, it actually sounds all right, but I do think from memory that in the pictures, if that's right, I could be wrong. If I'm right, it did say something about engine malfunction on here. Um, yeah. I don't know. Our radio works. Oh, can I live with a fake Heron? How would a fake Heron pass a credit check? <laughs> Blowers do not work. So it only works on four. So that needs a resistor as well. Does the air con work? I doubt it. It's blowing pretty fausty air. The aircon doesn't seem to be working, so let's turn it off and have a look under the bonnet. Right, here we are. Uh, let's check the oil cap if I can get it undone. Oh, looks okay. Uh, is that the coolant reservoir there? Could be. I can't actually see anything, so I don't know what that tells us. Hopefully it has got some coolant in it. I can't, can I see? I can't really see from here. I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't have any coolant in it because I can't really feel anything sloshing around. Um, we've lost the lid for our washer jet bottle. It's just grimy and grim under here, isn't it? Um, but nothing that's jumping out is being particularly bad. Look at the tiny little turbo. Isn't it? Like that's my fist. Smaller than my fist. Ridiculous. So that's the Picasso. Um, oh, I feel itchy from having been in there. I don't think it's actually got fleas or anything in there. It's just, just grim. So having only driven that across the yard here, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that I think that's probably the one that actually needs well, the least amount of mechanical work and needs a lot of validating, doesn't it? That's the sort of thing where not I think there's the money in it, but you're better off sending it down to the hand, hand car wash boys, aren't you? And just giving them 50, 60 quid or whatever it is to do a kind of best as you can valet for that money. Um, you know, proper valets are going to be, for that sort of thing, you probably won't be charging 250 quid. But, you know, that's half the value of the car. Um, in fact, that's the value of the car because I, I don't think it's worth what we paid for it. But who knows? If Sophie sells this, I will certainly update you. And that then leads us on to the 2009 Sayer Ibiza. 
This is 2009 Seat Ibiza SC 1.2S. That's on 117,000 and a half miles. It was a grade five as well. And on the mechanical report, it had just one advisory, which was the rear wiper arm movement. Uh, uh, but it's got a little bit more than that now. Sophie paid 600 pounds for this car, plus the fees, which totaled 818 pounds and 30 pence, plus Josh going and collecting it. So let's have a look around the car and see what it looks like, what Sophie saw when she was bidding, and then we'll get into the real problems. So front loop doesn't look too bad other than all the sort of algae stuff in here. Wants well, a good kind of degrease or whatever, then clean out. Headlights are both hazy. They could ideally do with being redone. The bonnet is open at the moment and there is a good reason for that, which we'll explain when we get around to that in a minute. Um, scuff on the corner here. It's been touched in on the bonnet. Someone's left a lot of bird poo on there, bird lime, whatever you want to call it for a long time. And that has done its damage. Check out the Wolf Race alloy wheels. I remember looking at these when I was younger. They probably sat in a Halford somewhere and I probably would have killed for a set of alloy wheels like that on something. But now I think they're hideous, especially these ones, which have been curbed absolutely the entire way around not one bit of that rim has been missed and look at the state of the disc as well there's a fairly healthy lip on that don't think that's been driven an awful lot recently uh, again we've got these marks down the doors which i'm gonna say are oils off your hand sunscreen or whether you're just a sweaty greasy mess i don't know i don't know exactly what causes it but it's something like that something gets left on from handprints whether it's the natural oils from your hand um, or it is sunscreen or whatever, but it does this to the paint. It's actually quite a job to, uh, to buff it out. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why it's hard, so hard work to get it out, but I just know it is. Um, I remember I've tried to do it when I first started out and I was doing all the polishing and cleaning of all the cars and you just, you polish and you polish and you polish and you polish. It doesn't seem to come out. I was probably doing it wrong, but Valet is in the comments. Let us know why it's so hard to get, you know, handprints from oily, greasy sunscreeny marks out a few things along this side but nothing crazy another wolf race alloy wheel that's curbed all the way around i should have checked tires so that's a good tire that's a good tire we've got a debeaker on the front a debeaker on the back I'd be amazed if this has got a full set of debeakers um this would be our wiper that's stuck in place i'm surprised it's still got a wiper car of this sort of mark i'm surprised it hasn't uh, been de-wipered so again the usual chips across the back of the bumper of course it's just started chucking down now i should have put uh like garage doors on the front of these stables and i could have pulled a car in that would have made sense wouldn't it mm, it's easing off slightly so i think we're just gonna have to brave it so this is where the most of the damage is on this near side rear corner bumpers had a good old wallop paint's kind of just like flaked off Damaged all the way around there, round through into this wing. Got this great big rusty scratch through the rear arch. It's damaged across the passenger door and the uh, rear quarter there as well. So really it needs a whole, it needs this whole side painting, maybe blended into the front wing. What's going on with the front bumper? Well, yeah, it's damaged down here as well. Uh, another fully curbed alloy wheel and yeah, I mean, this one's much lighter, but it has been curbed all the way around. We've got a triangle and a Westlake. So two Debeekers on the right-hand side, triangle, Westlake. Oh, don't ask me why, no idea. But I have never seen a set of alloy wheels this thoroughly curbed all the way around before. It uh, must take quite some skill to do that, to be honest. Bit of a bittersweet pill now as we've got to uh, get in the car and check the inside out. It's good because it's raining, but it's bad because it's not good in here either. Our remote central lock-in does not work, but we do have another spare key, which is a non-remote one. Uh, it's pretty well worn out in here. Actually, it's not as bad as I remember, but it is just grubby. It's just dust, grime everywhere with this seat actually. 
Okay, seat mechanism's broken, so I can't even put that seat forward. Not too bad in the back, actually. Um, just grimy. Loads of McDonald's chips. This car spent a lot of its life in a McDonald's car park. I can guarantee it. Interestingly, our battery has gone completely flat, and I did put a brand new battery on this just yesterday before I moved it over here. I don't know if you can see just in the distance, just over here somewhere is the old battery lying on the floor, which I can guess is probably okay. And I did notice that as soon as I connected up that battery, despite not having the key in the car, that the radio came on. I could hear music. I'm like, where the bloody hell's turning up playing music? But it was this car. So I got a feeling, and I've had this with Sayats before, I had a Sayat Altea where the radio just won't turn off and it drains the battery. So I might have to go and get a jump pack in order to show us what's working and what's not in here. Sadly, I haven't thought ahead and brought a top don jump pack with me, so I've got to use the uh, farm site jump pack, which is huge and incredibly heavy, bulky and generally a bit rubbish. I'm not even sure if it'll actually work. Uh, it's amazing that the top done stuff, which I'll be honest, when I first got some top done stuff, I wasn't sure how good it was going to be, but well, I absolutely rant and rave about it now. I genuinely think it's really good stuff. And we've had Noco, Noco, however, whatever you want to call them, uh, jump packs before, and they just kind of lose their potency over time. Whereas so far, the top done stuff, which has had an absolute battering from us, we use it literally daily, all of them, the JS1200 and the JS3000. Um, they all just still pump out full charge no problem no kind of like degradation of the uh, lithium batteries whatsoever i wouldn't say that if i didn't really think that um and it beats carrying around like an old lead acid battery like this that's basically got a set of jump leads on it to try and jump cars all right jump back on i wonder what it's saying well it's saying the battery level is okay but i'm not sure how much i trust it we do have power. So that shows us our 117. And then we'll turn the ignition on. The radio's not on currently. But it does work. It does turn off, supposedly. I can feel that the fans are blowing already. Fans work. Air conditioning's not gonna work because the engine isn't on currently. Oh God, here comes up. that rain again. Let's try and fire it up. That doesn't sound right, does it? That just sounds like the engine spinning and not firing. Uh, this car did start and run and it had to be jump started at BCA in order to get it on the truck. In fact, Josh got some clips of that. Give up. There we go. It's supposed to wait for me to turn it on. Oh, did it? I haven't even turned the jump pack on yet. Give it a couple of rounds. Oh. I'll do. Fair play, she didn't want to go for me. He loaded it, managed to start it on... Uh... Go on then, in you go. Gotta let my mate bash in because it is absolutely pouring out there. I can't leave him. Oh, wish he hadn't done that though. Uh, yeah, this car started, they managed to jumpstart it, get it on the truck. Uh, Josh drove it off and I think he said something like, it doesn't seem to like starting as much anymore. Uh, I thought it needed a, well, he thought it needed a battery. So I brought the battery down, changed it, went to go turn it over like this. And it almost sounded as if the uh, starter motor wasn't engaging. It wasn't throwing out its mechanism and hitting the crank um, flywheel and spinning the engine. But it is because I've actually moved this car on the starter motor. So you leave it in gear, turn the starter over and it kind of just turns you over and over and over. I think, I think the chain snapped. Since it got on the truck or since we tried to start it to get it back off the truck, the chain snapped. At least I think that's what happened. Steph has told me to take the oil cover cap off. Oil cover? The oil cap off the engine and have a look inside. And we should be able to see the crankshaft in there and you should be able to see the chain on the left-hand side on the top of the crankshaft. So 
either the chain snapped and it could be bundled up at the bottom. It could have stripped some teeth off. So we'll have to see if the chain's actually going around, if it's there at all. Um, but either way, I think this engine's toast. It, I think it's an interference engine, so valves are probably knackered, pistons have got dents and things in them, and it's a knackered old, uh, you know, Ibiza. It's just not worth getting into. If you've got new valves, etc., etc., you know, seven, eight hundred quid, thousand pounds or whatever, it's just not worth it, is it? So this is probably going to be a very bitter pill to swallow because it's probably going to have to go to the scrapyard. I don't think it's worth anything else unless we try and sell it for parts, maybe. Um, I don't know, but an expensive lesson for Sophie. Um, it's easy to get caught out, but again, if she'd bought that this is the sort of thing that can, it's just bad luck and it happens with auction cars it happens with buying stuff from private sellers um shit's gonna happen but if you buy a nice tidy car or you know it's tidy except for one little thing that you got fixed at least you've got a nice car that's worth fixing whereas if you buy some knackered old piece of crap just on the hope that the value is in the fact that it can drive and it's got an mot etc well what happens when it hasn't got an MOT and it doesn't drive it's absolutely worthless other than its scrap value right we'll leave bash having a little nap in the back of the Ibiza don't worry that wet dog isn't making this uh, smell any worse than it already smells oh you bash you smell like roses don't you not usually right take the oil cap off ah you can't see in because there's something in the way so we can't see um that's a shame but you know either way i think she's toast um nothing really good is coming of this car so if we're lucky this picasso may clean up okay it may look all right we might be able to titivate it hopefully it drives okay and there might be a small modicum of profit in that Hopefully uh, we can chuck a clutch in this and it's a very simple, I don't know, steering, suspension component that needs changing and some tracking done and parts for us and the labour. Let's say it owes us an extra couple, two, three hundred quid. And hopefully there's enough profit in that to clear the loss that we're going to make on this Ibiza. I'm hoping that once we put in all the work, a whole lot of work it's going to be, we will basically break even. Um, which is obviously not an ideal situation. You do not want to do an awful lot of work just to stay exactly where you were before you started. It's better than losing out completely, but uh, yeah, this isn't Sophie's most shining moment, but she is very good in other regards. She's very good at selling them. And uh, I think with a little bit of guidance, let's buy her some nicer stuff everything will be okay. And I have to say, I'm not shy of uh, taking on little jobs. In fact, we've got a Citroen DS3 out here that a customer brought to us in a very similar state as that Ibiza, uh, which is this one here. And the cam belt had snapped. And we said, it's probably like for us to do it for you, it's a thousand pound job or whatever, or whatever it was, eight, 900 quid. Um, and that, funny enough, they'd actually just bought it not long ago for about 2000 quid. And it just wasn't worth it to them. Um, by this point, doing all the diagnostics and everything and checking X, Y, Z and recovering the car for them. Uh, I think we only had about 150 quid bill for them. But I said, look, scrap value is 300 quid if you want to if you want to do that. So they wanted to scrap it. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, um, we'll give you 150 quid right off your bill and we'll take it on. And it's just sat out here waiting for our new chapter to start, who actually has started now, Adrian. Um, so at some point we will get that in the workshop and get it sorted out, rebuild the head, whatever it needs. Don't ask me, I'm not the mechanic. But I think Steph and uh, Adrian would be up for filming that. So if you'd like to see an engine rebuild on that little, uh, I think it's a 1.6, I think it's the same engine basically as is in this Citroen, 1.6 HDI. Um, I think, I could be wrong. Either way, if you wanna see that video, let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If standing out here in the rain talking about how I'm going to lose loads of money and I've got loads of stress isn't worth a subscribe from you, I don't know what is. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook for all the behind scenes stuff. I'm consistently putting out three videos a week at the moment that might even go up. And other than that, I'm going home to get in the dry. I'll see you next time.